so today we are going to start a new chapter which is flow in pipes and i have already recorded the video session for this lecture as well in uh, kalam okay and uh, you guys can go to that later on from this lecture today's lecture is all about uh, it's all about uh, uh, some introduction and giving you some idea on what you're going to learn okay <coughs> So chapter number three, flow in pipes, uh, start with the objective that we are going to understand what is laminar flow, what is turbulent flow, which you have gone through already in uh, chapter number two. So we are going to go in details as to understand what is the laminar flow behavior and turbulent flow behavior. <coughs> this is going to be followed by uh, Reynolds number. So once we have uh, laminar and turbulent and transition flow, then how do we differentiate them? We differentiate them using Reynolds number. So we are going to learn about Reynolds number later on in this uh, session. Uh, in the next session, we are going to learn about minor losses and major losses in pipelines. This will be followed by how, what is the friction factor and how do we calculate it using charts, the Moody chart and simplified tool book equation. Once we know and once we have determined the friction factor, then we go to the calculation of minor losses, major losses, the pressure losses, the head losses and how much work is required to basically overcome these losses. This is going to be followed by understanding the concept of equivalent length and then we will be solving Bernoulli equation uh, which you guys have learned already in chapter 2 and we are going to use Bernoulli equation in complex piping systems. So that this is all what you are going to learn about uh, in this chapter number 3. So it is a three week lecture and you are going to uh, go through each week uh, first two topics of the objectives. <coughs> so I am going to move to another slide. <coughs> introduction. So before moving on to the introduction, uh, it's important to know the concept of uh, pipes and uh, ducts and conduits, C-O-N-D-U-I-T-S and tubes. <coughs> so conduits basically refer to all these three things, uh, pipes, ducts and uh, tubes. Okay? Pipe is referred to as usually a circular cross-sectional uh, component uh, which, is, uh, which has got some length. Okay. Ducts are usually uh, rectangular or squarish okay? and the fluid that flows in ducts is usually uh, gaseous. Okay. Conduits refers to pipe, ducts and tubes altogether and uh, tubes are basically uh, similar to pipes but they are smaller in cross section. So there is guideline given that uh, the tubes might, uh, the diameter of the tube might be lesser than one inch or something. So tubes are smaller uh, section uh, diameter pipes. <coughs> so it is important to know about these concept pipes, ducts and tubes. Uh, usually in pipes, uh, even uh, gases flows as well and uh, fluid as well flows. For ducts, it's usually uh, the gaseous medium. Uh, and for tubes, uh, usually we supply steam from tube. So let's move to slide number uh, five. Okay, what are the two kinds of flows? So there are two kinds of flows. Number one is internal, and number two is external. <coughs> so as the name suggests, uh, about internal external flow. In internal flow, the fluid medium is basically within a surface. Okay, and it is moving or flowing within a surface or within a body whereas for external flows the flow is basically above or outside a surface for example if we look an example of pipes so in pipes as you know that uh, for example water or gas or something is going to flow inside a pipe whereas if you look at an example of a car okay then what happens is that once you are driving then air is basically moving uh, below and above your car so this is an example of a flow over an external body Flow over external body is a bit complex and it will be, uh, you guys are going to study about this flow over external bodies uh, in your fluid mechanics uh, too. And uh, somebody wants to join, wait a second. So admit all <coughs> and I'm going to check the chat if you guys have any questions for now. So everything is okay. Okay. So uh, flow flow could be characterized as internal and external flow. There are various examples for internal flows, so water flowing in pipelines, the blood flow in your heart. In oil and gas industry, you can see thousands of pipes uh, moving here and there. So they are carrying gaseous, fluid, liquidish uh, medium, okay? 
then we've got cooling system of a car of our radiator this is an example of both external and internal flow so basically within the radiator there is internal flow of the fluid the water or the coolant whereas external force convection is basically occurring outside the radiator so basically you're using a fan to force the air through the fins of the radiator so this is an example of <coughs> forced uh, convection uh, and an external flow and this is an example of uh, a combined flow system okay then you've got refrigeration air conditioning duct systems and this is an example of uh, internal flow <coughs> so this was a bit of introduction on uh, the types of flows so here you've got uh, a hard you've got uh, offshore uh, drilling uh, industries here here is an example of a pipe uh, i think it's a unit drainage pipe <coughs> and you can see uh, internal flow occurring within the pipe <coughs> And this is an example of a radiator, okay, uh, where both internal and external flow occurs. All of this has been given in the video lecture as well, but in this uh, online session is for you to familiarize yourself with the terms and everything. <laughs> now, <clears throat> what is laminar, what is transitional, and what is turbulent? <clears throat> So when we when we talk about internal flows or external flows as well, but we are going to uh, talk only about internal flows for this uh, subject. When we talk about them, we have three kinds of flows, types of flows. Okay. So it is important that if you are asked in the question, what is the type of flow, you need to write either it is a laminar or transitional or turbulent. <clears throat> so what is laminar? What is transitional? And what is turbulent flow? So in the 1880s, uh, there was a British engineer, uh, Osborn or uh, Reynolds. Okay. He conducted some experiments. <clears throat> So what he did is we have got a pipe, okay, and in that pipe water was flowing freely. So what he did was that he added a dial inside, just uh, at the uh, up, upstream region, okay, uh, downstream region. So what happened is that when you throw a dial, what happened is that he saw that the dial was going moving in a certain fashion. So what happened is that when he increased the velocity of water. <coughs> the behavior of dye moving within the pipe also changed so he saw in another example he saw that once he increases the velocity of the fluid or the water let's say for example if he increase the velocity of water and then you inject uh, the dye then with an increase in uh, <coughs> velocity he saw that there were some curvy uh, movements uh, which were going on within the pipe and a further increase in velocity so the velocity is increasing as we are moving downwards and if i am going to insert the die again then with a further increase at some critical point the flow becomes completely shaky and then it becomes random order of uh, flow molecules okay the randomness occurs so laminar l a m i n a r laminar flow is characterized by smooth smooth flow in streamlines so you can even see or visualize the streamline which the particle follow so laminar flow is characterized by smooth streamline flow and then once we increase the velocity then we jump to transitional flow transition R-A-N S-I-T-I-O-N transition means you are changing from one state to another state so the in between state is called transition state so we have you have seen laminar we are going to move towards turbulent so in between is transition state in transition state the shakiness comes shakiness s h a k i n e plus shakiness okay shakiness means that the fluid or the flow particles they tend to deviate from their uh, previous path from the streamline path they are not trying to deviate so once they try to deviate uh, then it becomes a transition and once they are moving very randomly and in disordered motion so it is very important to understand random r-a-n-d-o-m and disordered d-i-s-o-r-d-e-r-e-d -E -E -E, disordered motion so once it moves from random to disordered motion then it becomes turbulent t-u-r-b-u-l-e-n-t and the way to differentiate between these three flows lam laminar transition and turbulent is Reynold number Reynold number the guy who discovered this phenomena he named it himself Reynolds number R E Y N O L D S Reynolds number <laughs> now what is Reynolds number Reynolds number since we already saw in this experiment that we are increasing velocity so it means that Reynolds number depends on the velocity 
Then we also also saw in this experiment that we have got a fluid. It means the fluid has some properties. What are the properties? Properties of fluid are usually density and viscosity. Then we also see that this uh, pipe, uh, this in this experiment, this pipe has got some dimensions d. It means the Reynolds number R e, if I'm going to denote it by R e, is going to depend is a function of the diameter of the pipe, okay, or the dimensions of the duct or a hose, something like that, okay. So Reynolds number is a function of the diameter, then it is a function of the velocity of the flow, then it is a function of the density of uh, the fluid, then it is a function of viscosity, either a dynamic or kinematic. Dynamic viscosity is uh, referred to as uh, mu, M-E-W, and kinematic viscosity is referred to as mu, N-E-W, okay? So we can see that from this experiment, these are the parameters, diameter, velocity, density, uh, mu and mu okay, or mu it could be all because the difference between dynamic and kinematic viscosity is only the density so from the experiments he came out this Osborne guy Osborne Reynolds guy he came out with this formula re is equals to rho v average d over mu or it could be written as v average d over mu so this is the formula for Reynolds number RE <clears throat> and this uh, formula RE uh, Reynolds number is does not have any units does not have any unit what does it means it this term does not have any units is called dimensionless dimension dimensionless <clears throat> okay so uh, Reynolds number is either rho v average d over mu or it is v average d over mu. Now why we call this v v average, velocity v average. Since we know and I already asked you guys in the midterm as well, some of you answered and some of you did not answer. But since you saw that uh, uh, <coughs> we have got a pipe okay, and there is a fluid or let's say uh, water which is flowing inside okay how does the velocity profile looks like due to no slip condition the velocity profile looks like this okay means the velocity is lesser here then it increases and it is the highest in the middle why is it like that because we have got friction here at the pipe since we have friction here at the pipe we say that this is uh, no slip condition meaning that the velocity at uh, this wall is equals to zero because of the fact that we've got a viscous and frictional effect at the boundary so since our velocity profile looks like this so how to calculate the velocity okay our velocity profile is looking like this so how do we calculate the velocity we calculate the velocity by using the average so i'm going to draw in the center or at the average point and we are going to take the average as our velocity so whether the flow is within a medium whether the flow is within a uh, whether the flow is internal flow or whether a flow is external flow like on, on a car usually what we take what we take for the fluid is the average velocity okay so the velocity with which the flow is coming in okay is v a v g okay that is why in reynolds number if you go up in the formula Re is equals to the average multiplied by the diameter. This is not diameter, it is this is characteristic length. This D is also called characteristic length. C H A R A C T E R I S T R C L E N G T H. <coughs> so this characteristic length or the dimension could be the diameter of the pipe or could be the hydraulic diameter of a square or a rectangular section, etc. So that is something which we are going to look later on. So this was all more or less all about the concept of Reynolds number. Now let's move to the characteristics of laminar flow. So here it's written the laminar flow is smoother, streamlined that we have seen already. It's a highly ordered motion, yes correct. Uh, it is shorter in length. So it is important to note that laminar flow does not exist in nature. Uh, it does not exist a lot in nature. Sometimes you can observe it, sometimes you cannot. For instance, if you are going to light a candle, you can, if you observe the uh, fumes coming out, okay, then you initially here in the example as well, you can see that initially the flow is laminar. You can see the fumes. 
and later on these fl- uh, fumes basically uh, intermix with each other they try to disintegrate they try to become disordered so that's when the flow becomes turbulent even for cigarette smokers if you see uh, if they keep the cigarette in a stationary position what happens is that the smoke comes out uh, it goes up okay and uh, it for, for 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 some portion of the flow it is lamina but then later on it becomes disordered and it becomes uh, turbulent so lamina flow that is why that is which is the reason why the lamina flow uh, cannot sustain itself for a longer duration because of the fact that this universe is uh, based on disorderness of a system okay so uh, this short length is a characteristic of lamina flow and uh, lamina flow usually occurs in very viscous fluids like honey like uh, sticky oil something so these flows these fluids uh, when they move they move in a lamina fashion if we move to turbulent flow uh, turbulent flow as we saw already has rough streamlines okay so it's all zigzag then it is highly disordered motion that we have seen already most flow in reality is turbulent so in reality if you look at uh, rivers the flowing of rivers it is all zigzag uh, randomness and it's uh, water flowing through a waterfall okay if you look even at the oceans as well there are ripples everything is uh, almost turbulent <clears throat> and one important thing to note is that turbulent by turbulent we mean, we mean that the fluid has high momentum and when the fluid has high momentum it is going to strike with greater intensity with the uh, fl- walls of a pipe okay so once it is going to strike very with high momentum to the walls of the pipe what is going to happen is that it is going to create more friction so when it is going to create more friction then what is going to happen we are we will be required to overcome this friction so when i'm going to pump water i need to overcome this friction to uh, to flow the pipe or to uh, transport pipe from one place to another that is why we uh, consider pressure loss there is a loss of pressure due to this friction so that is why we consider pressure loss due to friction effects of pipes so this is something which we're going to learn in later parts of our uh, class So let's move to transition flow. Uh, transition flow, as we observed earlier, is basically uh, just a transition from lamina to turbulent. <clears throat> and usually, this uh, transition flow calculations are ignored because it is only for a shorter period of time, and uh, it is can be ignored uh, in the calculation. So, in the assumptions, you can write uh, for solving numericals that transition flow uh, calculation have been ignored. because of the fact that it is assumed that it will be uh, conducted for a shorter period of time so let's move to slide number 11 so here it is saying that renold number re re which was rho vd over mu is also the rho vd part the density average velocity and diameter part the combination of them is called inertial forces i and e r t i a l forces and the viscous part the viscosity part is due to viscous forces and here they have given the range the renold number if it is less than 2300 is characterized as lamina flow so why is it like that so as i gave you an example of honey so what happens in honey is that the viscous forces dominate force viscous are more dominant than the inertial forces fi inertial forces want to create momentum inertia means momentum and when momentum increases the friction and the disorderness increases so if uh, my denominator uh, viscous forces is larger enough to suppress the inertial forces to less than 2300 okay so if my viscous forces are high enough to suppress the inertial forces to less than 2300 then in this condition the flow is laminar okay this is through experimental iterations and calculations If my flow is between twenty three hundred and four thousand Renault number R E, it is less than or equal to four thousand, and greater than or equal to twenty three hundred, then this is transition flow. <coughs> and if my Renault number R E is greater than four thousand, then it is tra- characterized as turbulent flow. What happens in turbulent flow is that the inertial forces F I are much greater than the viscous forces of the fluid. so they overcome the viscous forces and then the renold number increases and when the renold number increases then the flow moves to uh, turbulent flow one very important thing which you guys need to understand is 
critical renal number or cr critical number renal number critical renal number refers to the renal number in which uh, the flow becomes turbulent the flow at which uh, the the type of flow becomes uh, turbulent is called uh, critical renal number okay so rcr is critical renal number <clears throat> so now we move to the concept of hydraulic diameter so since in the formulas we observe that a renal number is rho v d over mu and d for circular cross sections refer to the diameter but what happens if we have a square or rectangular section uh, a cross sectional uh, duct okay or something like an irregular shape so for for rectangular sections for square sections we have hydraulic diameter hydraulic diameter dh <clears throat> for for pipe it is internal diameter always remember this is di it is internal diameter so for calculation of renal number if the numerical has mentioned you the external as well as the internal diameter then you need to consider only the internal diameter because the flow is occurring only in the internal diameter so for these uh, rectangular and uh, square cross sections what happens is that we need to apply a different formula and this different formula is hydraulic diameter formula hydraulic diameter formula dh is equals to 4 times the area cross sectional area whole divided by the internal perimeter p e r i m e t e r okay <clears throat> so for example if my triangle is has a length of uh, a and a width of b and my square has a dimension of a then we can calculate the hydraulic diameter using this formula so uh, okay if somebody wants to join okay <clears throat> so hydraulic diameter dh for rectangle if i want to calculate is four times area right so area of rectangle is a into b Whole divided by the perimeter. So perimeter of a rectangle is two times a plus b. So uh, dh becomes four ab whole divided by two a plus b. So it comes out to two ab whole divided by a plus b. This is the formula for rectangle to calculate hydraulic diameter. If we talk about a square section, then it is four times the area. Area is a by a, which is four a square. Whole divided by a plus a plus a, which is also equals to four a. So hydraulic diameter comes out to be a for a square. The only dimension of square is also the hydraulic diameter of square. So uh, for a null number of pipe sections, we have got the diameter. But for a null number of square or rectangular section, we have got hydraulic diameter. And hydraulic diameter is four times cross sectional area divided by the perimeter, the internal perimeter. Remember, not the external because the flow is moving in the internal perimeter. And the formula for square and rectangle can be calculated using the uh, formula given for hydraulic diameter. So this was all about uh, hydraulic diameter. <laughs> so we are going to do one example for this class. Uh, okay. What we're saying is that uh, water is flowing at 20 degrees centigrade with an average velocity of 2 centimeter per second inside a circular pipe. Determine the flow type if the pipe diameter is 2 centimeter, 15 centimeter, and 30 centimeter. So we are given what we are given is that example number one, the water temperature. So temperature at the rate 20 degrees centigrade. Okay. Since we know that for uh, water. we need to get the density and uh, viscosity the dynamic viscosity the reason is because for renal number calculation we need these two factors the density and uh, dynamic viscosity these two things are properties of fluid so we are going to refer to property of fluid table okay it is given in your books angel and uh, i don't have it now but i have given it in the video lecture as well so table number a12 i believe properties of fluid <coughs> so if you refer to that table you can see that uh, in front of uh, water at 20 degree centigrade you can see the density of water which is given as 998 kg per meter cube and the viscosity also is given in the table the dynamic viscosity mu okay m e w 1.002 kg per meter dot second so now that we know we have the density we have got the dynamic viscosity okay 
uh, we need to should calculate Reynolds number. So R e is equals to rho V d over divided by mu. Okay. And the diameter is two centimeters. So diameter, internal diameter, let's just assume is two centimeters. So converted into meters, it becomes 0 0.02 meters. So let's put the values. So R e is equals to density is 998 multiply the velocity. What is the velocity given? The velocity given is two centimeter per second. Two centimeter per second is given. So convert it, converting two centimeter per second into meters, uh, we get uh, 0.02 meter per second multiplied by the diameter is 0 0.02 whole divided by the viscosity the dynamic viscosity is 1.002 and the Reynolds numbers as it is shown in the solution comes out to be 398 now this 398 is less than 2300 the and it fulfills the condition for laminar flow so you can guys can go and see the solve examples of part d and part c you guys can start uh, uh, you can you guys can start solving the numerical so let's move to uh, example number two <clears throat> in five minutes time the zoom is going to disconnect so the class will also be finished okay in four minutes time so once it's finished uh, uh, the class will be finished as well okay so example number two all of these examples have been done in the video lectures as well so water is flowing at 20 degrees centigrade in a circular pipe of 3.5 cm diameter to determine the range for the average velocity so that the flow is always transition flow. It means that the Reynolds number should be a less than or equal to 4000 and 2300. So if the flow is to be in transition flow, then what should be the average velocity? So I'm going to get two velocities if I want to uh, stay flow in transition. The V average, V average minimum, for minimum uh, number, Reynolds number of transition flow, and V average maximum for maximum Reynolds number uh, of the transition flow. So I will use these values. So 2300 is equals to rho VD over mu. Okay. So the values are same. The dynamic viscosity and density both have same values. So I'm going to put all of these values to get the average velocity. So every average uh, minimum, because I'm using minimum Reynolds number, is equals to uh, 2300 multiplied by 1.002 into 10 exponent minus 3 whole divided by density 998 multiplied by the diameter is 3.5 uh, 0.035 uh, meter. So the velocity average will come out to be something uh, if I are uh, forgotten the value but something like 0 0.06 something meter per second. So in the same way you guys can calculate that later on. In the same way, I'm going to use the maximum value to know number is 4000 for transition flow to get V average max, AVG max, MAX into T over mu. And in this way, I will get the average velocity maximum uh, for uh, this transition flow. So this was all about the numerical number two. Uh, the numerical number three is also the same and uh, the solution has been done in the video lecture as well and it is referring to hydraulic diameter okay we have got a rectangular pipe so using the formulas for hydraulic diameter we can calculate the d or the characteristic length so this was the end of your chapter for Reynolds number and in the next class i am going to give you some session on the entrance region okay what is entrance region what is the theory, theory and concept behind it and i will upload a lecture as well so <coughs> so Thank you for listening. If you guys have any question, comment in the chat. Otherwise, I will end the session.